Earlier on Yahoo Finance, San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly joined our very own Jennifer Schomburger to talk about the latest CPI print and the Fed's policy. Take a listen to what she had to say. We'll have to be data dependent about what actual rate hikes we take because we have domestic conditions, but we're also working in a global economy. And there's a lot of you know, uncertainty and risks out there. And we have to think about those in the context of exactly what we do. But there is literally no doubt in my mind that we need to put more restrictive stance of policy in the economy to further get demand and supply in balance so that consumers don't have to worry about such high inflation month after month. Joining us now to talk about the impact of the Fed's policy, we've got Tom, Tom Hanlon, Senior Investment Strategist at U.S. Bank Wealth Management. Uh, Tom, good to talk to you today. L let's pick up on that point that Mary Daly just made. She insists the Fed is still data dependent. The data suggests, in her words, that restrictive policy needs to continue. Is that how you see it? Oh, sure. And thanks for having us on. Yeah, the CPI print yesterday, so core inflation, excluding volatile food and energy at a 40-year high. And then today you had the consumer sentiment indicator from the University of Michigan, where consumers are asked where they see inflation and that actually ticked higher, which is not the direction the Fed wants to see. So I think that the you know, member Daly is, is uh, representing that the data continues to suggest that the Fed needs to continue to tighten to bring inflation back under control. Um, the data may suggest that the Fed needs to continue tightening um, control, but Mary Daly also in that interview said that you know, the, the, this concern about that tightening and how aggressively they're moving leading to a recession, a hard landing, so to speak, doesn't necessarily jive with what she has heard personally. So she talks about going out on the road, speaking to business owners who aren't necessarily asking about a recession, saying, yeah, they're, we're concerned about higher prices, but we're worried about hiring. We're worried about other issues. I mean, what do you make of this disconnect that, that we continue to hear between this fear of, you know, those like Jamie Dimon saying there's a big recession on the horizon and then Others were saying, well, that's not really the prime concern, though. Yeah, I think it's just a difference in, in where we are today to where we may be uh, in 2023. So certainly if you look at employment, uh, that doesn't suggest that we're in a recession right now. There's still there's still 10 million job openings and, and unemployment remains low and the consumer remains in pretty healthy shape. And we still have a lot of savings that accrued during the pandemic that they're able to draw upon uh, as we get towards the holiday season. I think that the question is, at what point do Federal Reserve rate hikes start to eat into both consumer spending and business uh, sentiment in the form of lowering uh, you know, investment in, in future gains? So I think the question is, what does this look like, not necessarily today, but in 2023? And there is the potential that the Fed continues to tighten into this slowing economy and potentially do end up in that, in that type of recession. It's not necessarily our base case today, but I think that's what you're seeing in terms of capital market volatility, which is how far will the Fed have to tighten to get inflation under control and what, what rate will that do to consumer spending and business investment? Uh, let's talk more about the volatility. I mean, yesterday we saw what was an incredible turnaround rally, uh, a huge swing. And today we saw, you know, by the way, yesterday coming on the back of what was a stronger than expected CPI print. Here we are today talking about a, a dip in the other direction again. What do you think's behind this choppiness? Yeah, so the initial market reaction on the CPI print yesterday was was down, and you you uh, reached levels that that the technicians or, or other market observers suggest that maybe reached like this oversold condition where program buying started to kick in, and then as as the stock market started to recover, perhaps you started to get uh, you know more people participating at upside. It was a pretty high volume day yesterday, so you know that suggests that it was there was a lot of participation in it. But again, when you go back to the fundamentals and when you go back to what's going on in the economy and you go back to the fears about inflation and, and what the Fed needs to do, today was just one, one more data point that lets you know that inflation isn't yet anywhere near the Fed's target rate and the Fed's going to have to continue to tighten policy. Is this kind of choppiness continuing, you think, moving forward here as we look ahead to the next FOMC meeting? Yeah, I mean, we think it sets up as a pretty news heavy year, as we call it here in the fourth quarter. So you've got two Federal Reserve meetings, one in November, one in December. You've got the midterm elections and the setting up in, in the first couple of weeks in November. Uh, and then you have, you know, still he has more CPI prints and other economic releases. And we're just getting started on third quarter earnings and the corporations. Uh, this will be a, a key focal area as well as what is corporate America seeing in terms of the outlook? Is it, is it as visible as they, they thought it was in the previous quarters or are things starting to get cloudy in terms of the, of the forward looking outlook? So these are the things that are gonna play into 
now until the rest of the year. We think that sets up for a fairly choppy uh, capital market and equity market going forward. Tom Hanlon, U.S. Bank Wealth Management Senior Investment Strategist. Appreciate your time today.